In this session, captured live from Get Global in Los Angeles, Noel Lee, the CEO and head monster of Monster Inc., shares the knowledge that he has gleaned about international expansion since founding the company. Monster strategies have relied in part on partnerships and doing exciting and creative collaborations, something that has built affinities and strong relationships in hot markets around the world. Noel will also give us a peek into the future of Monster, with exciting plans that point to how he views strategy and the global consumer technology landscape today. You can find video of Noel Lee's session and his presentation materials on Get Global's YouTube channel, listed in this podcast episode's notes. So I'm here to talk to you about light international expansion. Um, I guess just to define that, what that means to me and why I'm here. Um, so that's not sending 3,000 people into India. Uh, what this means is we help companies that want to go into, could be 100 markets, could be 20 markets, could be just one market, and they want to sell their product or they want to put a research and development team in. Uh, there's lots of different sort of elements of what we do, but it's that, that sort of where you, you have a, a few people that you want to essentially get into a market. Okay. Um, now, sort of good news, bad news. Bad news is, at the core of our business, and what you're going to hear me talk about for the next 15 minutes, um, is accounting, tax, and payroll. Now, the, the good news about that uh, is that of the five things I'm going to talk about, that comes up once. Okay? So when people ask me what I do, I say that I help companies expand internationally and I minimize their risk. That's, that's the key to what the services that I provide. Okay? So to talk about those five things, uh, we're going to go through, sort of just touch on strategy. We're going to touch on structure. We're going to touch on people. Okay? And then we're going to talk about bookkeeping, accounting, VAT a little bit. I have to throw that in. I'm an accountant by trade. So that's, that's my background. And uh, then the last part, I'm going to just talk about ongoing review. Okay. So the first part of it is strategy. Now, those are very intelligent people out here. I don't need to tell you that the key to strategy is to have one. Right? The number of our clients that say, I'm going to expand international. I say, great. What are you going to do? I'm going to go into Europe. Great. Where do you want to go in Europe? Oh, just Europe. Right? Or I'm going to go into Asia. Great. Where do you want to go into Asia? Right? Well, China. Right? That's, that's, that's in Asia. Yes, it is. What, anything else? Right? Have that strategy. Know your market. I think it was Paul Thomas, who was from uh, uh, the Cider Company earlier. He mentioned, he, specific, he went down to detail about the tribes that he was going to sell to. You know, that strategy, right? So just have a strategy. I mean, where I see this go very, very wrong is when you haven't coordinated your strategy internally. I have clients that go, they say, like I said, they say, well, I want to go into Europe. They say, great, we're going to go into the UK, we're going to go into France, we're going into Germany, excellent. And we've made a, we've made a hire, so we've hired an employee already, great. Where are they? They're in Norway. Okay, how did that happen? Well, a friend of a friend, and this is a really good sales guy, and he's going to do it for us, right? Okay, so maybe a little more internal coordination would help out there. Um, you also, though, in your strategy, have to be adaptable. It sort of goes without saying when you're international. Um, and, uh, um, one of the things, though, when you are going international is that things are different. I know that again, that should go without saying. That's a simple thing. But I had a client that was talking to in the middle. Flew out to Dubai. I was there for a Moved back. And it was finally on, on, on the Thursday. I ended up getting in. Met for one o'clock in the afternoon. Finally got in to see him at 3 o'clock. We talked for an hour, and I was ready with my pitch. I, I knew exactly what I wanted to say about my business, and he didn't want to hear anything about my business. He wanted to hear about me. He wanted to hear about my kids. He wanted to know about family. He wanted to tell me about his. So I walked away from that meeting thinking, all right, well, that was sort of a waste, wasn't it? But it wasn't. 
What he was looking for, though, was he was looking for me to be committed to him. He was looking to get to know me, right? And that's not something that I had thought about in that much depth before, okay? And then took two other meetings for us to finally talk about business. But at the end of that, he's now been a client for the last couple of years, and we've expanded him into about 15 different markets, okay? So the loyalty that that creates, though, is key. But it was a cultural difference that I, I was not prepared for, you need to be prepared for. So again, that element of strategy. Okay. Structure. I'll quickly touch on structure. Here's where it gets, can get a little bit technical, a little bit boring. How you set up in a company really does matter. There's sort of two pieces of it. There's a cost, and then there's also uh, perception. Okay. So if you're going into a market... Oh. Now can you hear me okay? Yeah? All right. Could you hear anything that I said before then? Yeah? All right, good, good. So when we're talking about structure, is what do you want to put in place? So there's various solutions you can have to put a person into a country. There's professional employment organizations, so PEOs. They will hire your employer, employee for you. That's pretty good, right? You don't have to set up a, a structure. It can be done pretty quick. That's great. There's things called non-resident payrolls. Those are across Europe. They're called rep offices in Asia. Again, on those, you can hire certain types of employees. So pre-sale, not people that are, that are actually signing sales agreements, not people that are doing post-sale activities, so implementation of your product, those things, sort of things. You can, you, can, you can do that, and that can be set up pretty quick. Okay, and then, then you're looking at an actual legal entity, so branch, subsidiary, I don't like branches. Branches are terrible. Now, you're probably going to hear somebody else later today say branches are great. Um, but if you're a private company, when you go and you create a branch, there's a lot of places in Europe that require you to publicly file your financials. If you create a branch, they require you to, pu to publicly uh, put out your parent company financials. So if you want any of that to be private, that goes, that goes, uh, it goes to the public pretty quick when you do branches. So again, as, as I went though, your subsidiary option, you're creating a legal entity. You have to unwind that entity if it doesn't go right, right? So there's drawbacks to these. The positives of a subsidiary though, and in a lot of markets, you see in a lot of Asian markets, so China, Japan, they like dealing with somebody that's going to be there permanently. So that goes for both your employee and your customer. They like to know you're invested in their market. They like to know you're gonna be there. You're not just coming in for a quick sale and then going away. You're going to be there for the long haul. That's why you've invested, that's why you put the money in, and that's why you've created this subsidiary, okay? So again, pros and cons on each side, but th those are the sort of things that uh, you need to think about when you're going into markets. The, the next sort of thing is, is actually the, on the people side. So hiring people, this is the one that's, the, you can create the best stories out of this, this, uh, this topic, okay? So it's hard enough to go and find people. It's hard enough to go and find the right people, okay? The first thing you should be thinking about, though, when you hire somebody internationally is how you're going to get rid of them, okay? Well, I heard that. <laughs> but it's true, because what, how, what are you going to do if that person decides they want to leave, okay? Or, or worse yet, they're a terrible employee, and they don't want to leave. How do you get rid of them? What are you going to have to pay them to leave? What are the local employment laws going to be? Okay. Have you sent them a U.S. employment contract? And they've signed that, and you think that's all fine. Most of the world does not have at-will employment. Okay. These sort of things invalidate your employment contracts and cause you lots of problems locally. Okay. I mean, one, of the, one of the best examples, I think, and I didn't mention a contractor. You can put, obviously, contractors in. That works. But I think one of the best examples I've had where it went terribly wrong was it was anybody from France? Yes? OK, well, either then uh, you, you'll know about this, or uh, I'm uh, besmirching you. Um, but uh, in, in, we had a situation in which an employee was clearly not a contractor. Okay. They were getting a bonus. They only worked for this one company. They had an, a company email address. It was pretty clear that they were not, they were not just a contractor. 
okay? This, this, obviously things went sour. And how this ended up working out is that the, employee, the employer ended up having to pay a bunch of tax, right? Because this was an employee and not a contractor. So when it got all through the court systems, so they had to pay tax to the government, they had to pay out the individual, and it cost them a lot of money just because they didn't set it up right in the beginning, right? Welcome to France. <laughs> Welcome to France. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Okay. These are the things you need to think about when you're going in, right? Just, just to, again, to have that peace of mind. Okay. So we've talked, we've talked about, uh, we've talked about the structure you're going to put in. Now we've talked about people. So the last thing is is the not the boring part, the exciting part, because I'm an accountant, right? Uh, is the accounting. So the bookkeeping, how you're going to do that. A lot of countries, you'll take for granted that there's cloud systems here, and a lot of our, a lot of our clients use cloud systems. You can do that, but there's a lot of countries out there, Brazil, India, where the accounting systems tie into the tax systems, or they tie into your invoicing systems that have to be done locally. So you can't just assume you're going to use a cloud-based system and that's going to work everywhere. Okay. So again, when you're going in, think about these things. Indirect taxes, VAT, I can give you a great story about this as well, of someone that went into Europe thought they had a magnificent product, and they did. It was selling a wildfire, and they thought they were undercutting all their uh, competitors because they weren't charging VAT. Okay. And it was 20% you know, in the UK. So of course, if you, don't charge 20, if you charge 20% less, you're gonna have a great, uh, uh, great sales platform. However, that took their margin from you know, a 25% margin down to about 5% once, once they had to start paying the government. So again, think these things through. Um, the, you know, the UK and it, and it has actually a sort of a limit. It's a very low limit, 80,000 pounds, I think, per year revenue. A lot of other European countries don't have that little flexibility in there. So again, things to think about before you get into the market. Okay. Um, the last one to talk about is sort of an ongoing review. Okay. So once you get, so you set it all up, you got your people in, they're making sales, that's excellent, that's great. Okay. And then a lot of people will think, well, that will just take care of itself. And then your business starts to change, as most businesses do. Instead of having your products come in through the UK, say, you start using Netherlands, right? All of a sudden your people, that you had one, one or two people in, uh, in France, all of a sudden now you have 10 people in France, right? And you haven't changed anything. So you just, things are just moving along, right? You have to think about this and look back and say, say what's changed and what can happen? So when you change the points that your goods are coming in, that changes your VAT nexus. That can change your VAT reporting, okay? That have big, big, massive impacts on all your operations. If you start to have, if you're on a non-resident payroll, so you just have a pre-sales person going in, all of a sudden you're up to 15 employees. It's actually implementation of your product. All of a sudden it's, uh, you know, they're locally, they're signing sales contracts. Well, that, what that creates is your permanent establishment risk. So that creates, uh, I, I said I wouldn't go into tax too much, but that, that's a tax impact. Okay. The government can, come back to you and say, you've been doing business in France. Sorry for picking on France. <laughs> you've been doing business in France. You haven't been charging, you, you haven't given us, the tax man, any money essentially, right? So you're sending all the revenue back to the US. Well, that's not right, you have a permanent establishment here. They'll look and see all the revenue that your employees have created. They'll go back their seven years or more and then they'll tax you on that, and they'll tax you with penalties. So again, that can be very, very expensive. So an ongoing review is what's gonna keep those things from happening. How many people do you have? You know, where are your goods being shipped? These are the questions that we ask our customers all the time. You know, have you changed from a B2B to a B2C? Again, massive impacts on, on, on how you do VAT, how you do different things, okay? So, so in, in essence, make sure that you do that review. Okay. 
So now we've gone through, we've gone through it all. So we've got our strategy, we've, got, we've done our structuring, we've done our, got our people, all that. And, and we're at the end, and the very, very last thing to do, of course, is to say, we're, we're next. <laughs>